Okay. So a quick introduction and then we'll go through things like, why do I need to know this stuff? Really? Come on, I just want to draw a map. We'll have a little side view into side trip into spherical geometry, because that's always fun. We'll come back to why doesn't my data show up? Uh, now, why don't my layers line up? And please make it stop. So quick introduction. Uh, as Steam just said, I'm a geospatial consultant at Aston Technology. I'm a developer on GeoTools and GeoServer. And I'm somebody who helps people who are wrong on the internet. Um, you see from this XKCD cartoon, this is one my wife is very familiar with. Um, she's always complaining about the fact that I'm sitting up late at night answering questions on Stack Overflow and GIS Stack Overflow, uh, Stack Exchange. Uh, and this talk is really driven by that that third one. Um, I spent a lot of time on Stack, on, on, say on GIS Stack Exchange, and uh, there are certain questions that come up again and again and again. And the key one is, why doesn't my data show up or why doesn't my data line up? Uh, so we're going to try and talk to you a little bit about why we need to worry about this stuff. So you'll have heard people talk about projections and coordinate reference systems and spatial reference systems and spherical earths, ellipsoidal earths, geoids, datums. And you're thinking, well, you know, I just came here to draw a map. I've got a simple study area or I just want to draw a map of the world. Why is this? Why are they making me worry about all of this stuff? And essentially, you don't need to worry about all of this stuff most of the time, but then something will go wrong and you do. Um, so we're going to look at things like what the difference between a projected and a geographic projection is. Um, coordinate reference system, a spatial reference system, those are synonyms um, and I use them interchangeably. I also use projection as a synonym of that uh, of them as well, which is technically not correct, but that's because I'm not really a geographer. Um, so basically, why do we have to have map projections? Well, this is unfortunately because the Earth's a sphere or a solid surface, and there's no way to go from the surface of a globe to a flat piece of paper or a flat computer screen uh, without doing some sort of transformation, um, which distorts at some way. There will always be some distortion. Uh, you can't get away from it. Um, I meant to put a link in here. Actually, there's a video that uh, Hannah Fry did where she cuts up an inflatable globe into a, an Euler spiral, which apparently is the least distorting way to do this. Uh, but you end up with a very, very long, narrow map, um, which is why it doesn't have much distortion, but it's absolutely useless as a map. Um, but that's what happens when you let mathematicians loose on this. Uh, Having said that the Earth is round or spherical, it's not really. The Earth is actually, uh, at the first approximation, a flatted, a flattened ellipsoid. So it's like a rugby ball that somebody sat on. The equator bulges out. So the distance, the, the width of the Earth, the radius of the Earth at the equator is less than, is more than the radius of the Earth at the poles. Um, and it's a lumpy one at that. Um, so Technically, it's a geoid, which when you go look up, what does geoid mean? It just says it's the shape of the Earth. Um, and back when I was an undergraduate in geophysics, we used to worry about how it was the normal of the surface of the gravitational field and yada, yada, yada. Basically, the Earth is not as round or as flat as you thought it was. Um, but we can mathematically fit a good ellipsoid to it or a generally agreed ellipsoid, um, which is what you use when you're looking at the rest of the world. We have regionally fitting ellipsoids. So Americans use an, uh, uh, use, use an ellipsoid that fits particularly well in America. Uh, Europe uses an ellip a different ellipsoid that fits particularly well in Europe. Um, and it all starts to fall apart at that point. So those are our data, our ellipsoids and geoids. Datum is when you start to narrow it down, you have to tie it down, you have to say, where is zero, zero on my axis system? Um, and how does that tie into the rest of the ellipsoids? So if you don't use the same datum or you don't carefully transform from one datum to another, again, it'll all go horribly wrong. So some common projections you'll come across. This is the uh, favorite of computer scientists uh, and amateur geographers. It's called the Platte Carré. 
uh, or EPSG 4326. Uh, basically, plat carry just means flat map, because um, I finally worked to find out about Mr. Carry and why he'd done this projection. But it turns out it is just a French word that's been that we haven't translated. Uh, as you'll see, uh, it's the map you're expecting to see. All the boxes are square, uh, and you'll notice I've used graticals on nearly all of my maps in this, uh, in this talk. Uh, so you can see where the distortions are. Uh, the problem is, obviously, it's made the South Pole uh, 100, uh, 360 degrees long. It's made the North Pole stretch out. So all of these bits at the top, these little squares aren't actually square. This good old web Mercator, um, which has the advantage that it's a square, which makes tiling it up easy. Uh, you can see here that the distortion as you go away from the equator is enormous. And as you get to the actual poles, it's exceptionally, it goes to infinity at the poles. So this is actually chopped short of the poles. Um, there are a lot of reasons why this isn't a good, good, good projection to use for any of your other maps. We get locally relevant, so Ordnance Survey AGB National Grid. That's the one you, at the bottom is what you'd expect it to look like. It turns out you can zoom out to the extent of the world. Uh, and as you'll see, there's huge distortions in you know, South America. Uh, North America gets all chopped up. It's horrible, which is why you shouldn't use a local projection like OSGB outside of the area it's designed for, which is Great Britain. Okay, you'll see they're going, well, you know, I just want to draw a map. I don't need this. Uh, so what do you want to show? We consider the newly independent Republic of Sussex because our feudal overlords have run away eh, to Canada. Uh, we've acquired some missiles and we want to know where we can threaten them with them. So the first one is, and this is the one that comes up most often on uh, Stack Exchange. I've got, I'm trying to do a buffer and I've done all my examples in QGIS, but equally people try and do this in R, in GeoPandas, in PostGIS. The answer is the same anyway. Okay, so I've got a point and I've done a hundred meter buffer or a thousand kilometer buffer and it's returned all of the data in my in my data set. Something must be wrong. Well, the answer to that is you've used a hundred degree or a thousand degree buffer and your buffer is actually bigger than the whole world, um, which is why you've got back all of the data in your data set. So don't ever do buffers in degrees. Oh, that's okay. Everybody knows I can convert my degrees into a meter into meters. Uh, so you go and look on, you type into Google, uh, degree in kilometers, um, and it will tell you that at one degree is 111 kilometers, uh, technically one nautical mile. If you read the small print, it then actually says that's one degree of latitude, not one degree of longitude. Um, but we don't need to worry about little things like that. So I want to do a thousand kilometer buffer. I'm going to divide it by 111 kilometers. Uh, you can actually type a thousand divided by 111 into that distance box in QGIS and it will tell you it's 9.009 .009 degrees. It'll also put a little red a little red and yellow warning triangle there that says this is in degrees you really shouldn't do this. Um, it'll happily carry on and do it if you ignore that warning though. Um, you'll see that you've managed to project your circle above the North Pole uh, which might be a problem. Uh, uh, and it's not right. Uh, so you think, oh, well, okay, there's another way of getting meters. I'll use the web Mercator projection, uh, which we discussed earlier. Uh, as I said, as you go further north, these boxes get bigger and bigger. These are all 10 degree boxes. So you'll notice that 10 degrees is of longitude is always the same. 10 degrees of latitude gets bigger and bigger and bigger on the surface of the map. Well, that looks okay. It's a circle. Uh, I go back into my uh, degrees, uh, you'll see that actually it's gone horribly wrong. I can measure it. Uh, the width of the uh, circle is 50,000 here, but the height of the circle is only about 23. This is, uh, yes, 2,300 kilometers, uh, which is clearly not right. So I need to do something else. So if I really want to do it properly, I need to center my projection on Sussex. Um, I happen to use an orthographic projection here. I could use any number of projections that were centered on Sussex. Uh, and you start to actually get some proper circles. Uh, if you want to see what the others look like. Um, so there was the 
one in degrees that got truncated at the North Pole. Um, as we said, the Mercator ones don't look quite as distorted um, when you project them onto here, but they're still the wrong sizes when you've corrected for the distortion. Um, there were a lot of news agencies that were embarrassed when they tried to work out where North Korea could shoot with a missile uh, earlier last year, last year, year before. Um, so never calculate a buffer in degrees, uh, never do geographic analysis in Web Mercator. It will always be wrong. Try and find an equal area projection. So a little side trip into some spherical geography. Who knows which is the shorter of those two lines? Because everybody knows, you know, basic algebra, the shortest line is the straight, straight line is the shortest line between two points, except when you're in a globe, in which case it's the great circle route, which is this one. Uh, as anybody who's ever flown from Gatwick, which is pretty much up there that dot is, uh, to anywhere in North America, you always end up going over Greenland and you either come down the west coast, the east coast, or you come across Canada to the west coast. You don't fly straight across, just like that. Uh, if you're working out a distance, if you're working on a flat plane, it's great. It's basic Pythagoras. Uh, if you're working on a sphere, you take two points and you have to do the arctan of the cosies times the thing. Uh, then you have to work out the radius of the Earth times the delta. It's just horrible. Um, uh, and if you're working on an ellipsoid, you actually want to do it properly. Uh, you should go and look at, at Carney's paper on geodesics on an ellipsoid of the revolution um, and basically download his geographic lib, which works on a variety of uh, programs and it's what geotools and geoserver use. Uh, it'll give you the right answer. Don't try and do the maths yourself. Um, now, if we consider the, the WGS 84 points, Nought, nought. So we're going to start at Null Island and then we're going to go up to the North Pole, 90, 0. And then we're going to go down, back down, down to a point that's uh, 90 degrees around the equator. Well, it's easy, isn't it? It's a right angle triangle. We can do all sorts of simple maths on that. It's easy enough for us to work out what the, uh, what the, what the lengths of the sides are, except that it's not. You've got to remember that that point there is exactly the same as that point there, or that point there, or that point there, or that point there, because we've smeared the North Pole out across the width of the map. So it's actually, uh, if you if you draw it, still draw it as a flat, as flat straight lines with no densification, uh, you end up with an equilateral triangle, which is also wrong. And the correct answer is the red one, where you actually have a right angle at each corner. Um, so everything that your high school teacher taught you about how Angles in a triangle always add up to nine, uh, up to 180. Doesn't apply any longer. Uh, 270 degrees in a triangle, a spherical triangle, is nothing. You can get much bigger triangle uh, angles than that. So, spherical geometry will make your head hurt. Um, it doesn't follow the usual rules that you're used to. So there's a reason that Euclid and everybody else skipped it. Uh, where possible, transform your data into a local Cartesian projection or be very careful about your assumptions. Preferably use somebody else's code. Don't write this stuff yourself. Um, people always turn up saying, oh, I don't want to put the extra weight of a whole library in to solve this problem for me. It must be simple. It's not, it's really hard. The edge cases are very, very hard uh, and it's very easy to get it wrong. Um, uh, but people do it all the time. So, so the question it comes up the most often, why doesn't my data show up or why doesn't my data show up where I expected it to be? So should we play a game? It's another indication of how old people are and anybody who's in Isaac's, uh, uh, Ivan's talk earlier with his ZX Spectrum will possibly remember war games as well. Where is 510 or 051? Is they different? Are they the same place? Could be anywhere really. That's just a few of the possible places that QGIS was prepared to put my dot. Um, so there's the one that I was expecting, which is there. There's one over there. So you often get people saying, well, why is it turned up in the, in the Indian Ocean or why is it turned up in Antarctica? 
I've got one in the center of the US. I've got one down here in Antarctica. Uh, I've got one down here on Null Island. Uh, I've got one over here in Northern Italy by the look of it. Um, and those are all perfectly correct results, uh, depending on which projection you pick. Um, and so any of those or all of those are valid answers. So unless you've got some metadata with your points, they're just random numbers. Uh, so always make sure you know what projection your data is in when you get it. Go back and beat up the person who sent it to you if they didn't send you projection data. Now, why don't my layers line up? Uh, so I used to live in Pennsylvania, so I picked Pennsylvania data to test this with. Uh, I've got two layers, one of roads and one of county boundaries, and I want to do some analysis on them. You know, they're in Pennsylvania state plane of some sort. I don't know. So I just dragged them into QGIS and saw what, tried to see what would happen. And you can tell they don't line up. That's not, I've stuck two images together. That's what it looked like when I put it into QGIS. Um, so neither layer came with a proj file. Actually, that's not quite true. I had to delete it to make this point, but believe that you could have got plenty of data. So I guessed it was in Pennsylvania South. Um, and for anybody, Let's to work, complain about the weirdness. Pennsylvania uses a, a north-south uh, division of its state, two state planes, even though clearly an east-west one would be much more plausible. Uh, but in fact, one of them is in Pennsylvania north US feet, and the other is in meters, which is why one of them is three times bigger than the other one. Um, you can fix this, you can go to Right click on your layer, go to set CRS and set the layer CRS, provided you know what the correct answer is. If you pick the wrong thing there, your data will still not line up and it will be even worse. The other question we see a lot is how do I reproject my data? So people will say, well, I went to set CRS and I set CRS to being in degrees, but it's still showing up as meters. The coordinates are all too big. As I say, you should only use set CRS if there's no metadata and you know what the right value is. If you want to change the projection of your data, you go to save or export as it's now called your data and select the new CRS you would like. So instead of going to set CRS, you go to export, pull across, save features as. Uh, our final one for, for QGIS, when baseline maps go wrong. So I've added my natural earth coastline data, uh, which is WGS84. And then I stuck in, I went on to, to quick maps and it doesn't line up. Projections don't match. The OSM data is in Web Mercator and I have no idea why Q just doesn't reproject it. But if you use quick map services, it doesn't. If you want them to line up, you have to change the projection of your project. Not of either of your layers. Don't start changing any of the layer metadata. Just go with the project. Uh, in other words, now you see it, now you don't. That's OS data where they don't feel you need a projection because everybody knows that it comes in, in OSGB. Uh, QGIS default, default projection is WSGS84. Uh, so again, you need to set it to make it turn up in the right place like that. Uh, ultimately, you end up visiting Null Island. Here's, uh, I've had to draw a little red circle around my data now. It's all hiding down there. Uh, the map is in Web Mercator, uh, and I told it that, that I should set my data to match that. Uh, it's all hiding down there. So, coordinates without projection, meanings, numbers, there's no projection supply. Look at the metadata. Fix your input data once, don't rely on remembering every time, and then look at your range of bounding box to give you an idea of what you're looking for. So, oh, I just want it all to stop. Well, use PostGIS. <laughs> You can use geography. Uh, you don't have to worry so much then. You can store it all as WGS84. Two minutes, Ian. Okay. Uh, you store it all as WGS84, as geography data. You get a lot fewer functions and you get much slower performance. Um, I'm quoting uh, Regina here, but I believe her that she's done the tests. It's 10 times slower to use geography. ST transform is your friend and you can create indexes on it on transforms. Um, so if you know you're going to be looking at stuff regularly in a different projection, uh, then that will work. D within is useful then. Failing that, just be careful. 
try not to store your data in formats without an explicit internal metadata. So prefer things like geo packages or PostGIS where the, the metadata is baked in as opposed to shape files or CSV files where you're relying on people remembering to actually create a .prj file and remember to send it to you. Um, and for rasters, prefer GeoTIFFs to world files or ASCII grids, which again requires somebody to manually set the metadata. Please never ship a data file without a projection and metadata describing it. Um, we shouldn't have to be saying this in 2020, but we do. And make sure you reproject to a relevant projection early on in your workflow. So our conclusions, um, degrees and meters don't really ma match, don't come together. Never calculate your buffer in degrees. Never do any sort of geographic analysis in WebMercator. Try and find a winning call area projection if your process is related to the area of a unit. Uh, spherical geometry will make your head hurt. Don't write this code yourselves, please. Uh, coordinates without a projection are meaningless numbers. If there's no projection supplied, look in your metadata. If there's nothing in your metadata, go back to your data supplier. Beat them over the head with a big stick until they can finally tell you what projection it was in. Uh, fix your input data then. Don't rely on remembering this every time you enter it into QGIS and going a set projection to it then. Do it once. And look at the range of your bounding box to give yourself some clues. If it's got small numbers, it's probably geographic. If it's big numbers, then it's probably in meters or feet. Uh, you can get a copy of this talk from my website. And if you want, there are 6,000 more plus questions on GIS Stack Exchange um, that you can go and have a look at, um, many of which still require answering or at least marking as being a duplicate of another one. Okay. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, even I learned a little bit about projections. Um, <laughs> So I've got a few questions for you, Ian. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many we can get through in the next few minutes. Um, in one or two sentences, what's the difference between a projected and a geographic map projection? Uh, so a projected one has been converted from degrees into some useful unit, uh, whereas a geographic one remains in degrees. Right. Thank you. Um, so Ricardo asks, um, why do we not want to use Mercator for GIS analysis? Uh, because it distorts things too badly. Uh, right. <laughs> it's because um, yeah, as, as, as you go further from the north from the equator, the distortion increases. To the point where it's you showed us in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nick Duggan, who knows a bucket load more about this stuff than I do, says... I stole his, I stole his, um, his image earlier. <laughs> he said, mention OSTN02 or OSTN15 for transformations and bringing into QGIS. The only word I understood there was mention and yeah. bringing. No, that's... If you get really keen and you're really worried, you know, the standard conversion transform from uh, WGS 84, say, to OSGB National Grid is accurate to a meter or two. And to be honest, for most of us, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you're people like uh, Nicholas and you're doing actual surveying and things, you're going to want to use a much more accurate transform uh, for which the OS provides two, uh, which I know to know as 02 and, 05, uh, and 15. Um, that you can add to QGIS, you need to download, um, I can't remember what this is, there's a projections file. It's part of the um, proj system that you download and store in user share proj. And after that, all your QGIS versions go down to centimeter or sub-centimeter accuracy. I've yet hmm. to meet anybody who surveys anything to sub-centimeter accuracy despite their claims. But uh, there we go. Uh, the other thing I should have mentioned was there. don't ever produce your projections to 18 decimal places is because you haven't got that accuracy originally. Um, and Tina C says, 
Lots of UK government shape files have been valid geometries and come with user-defined projections. When I convert to a different coordinate system, my map ends up somewhere else in QGIS. Yep. <laughs> That's possibly because <laughs> you're um, you're doing a you're using set CRS to set the new projection rather than export save features as um, the reason it comes up as as a user defined projection is because they've used um, a certain large vendors as version of the projection string rather than the the standard WKT version that everybody else in the world uses. Um, now, the certain large vendor has argued in the past that they created their strings first and we should have all copied them. Um, but that's a bit of a poor excuse, if you ask me. 